Sometimes life happens. We see you. And you feel all alone. We feel you. With nowhere to go. We got you. So many questions unanswered. We understand. Yeah. And you feel like you can't. That's right. But God rest understands. with your own thoughts. Uh, uh. This is for you. Yeah. When life happens, and it makes Come. you feel like you are. You're off the beat. Off, off the beat. Off the beat. Welcome to another episode of Off Beat Podcast. I'm your host, Jorge Ambriz, and I have an awesome, awesome, awesome privilege to be able to have some amazing people right here on this episode with me today. They are a young couple, and they are on a roll. They got multiple businesses right here in the Inland Empire, and one of them is popping off, and I know that you guys might have heard of, but we have the owners of multiple businesses, but the most recent that has been popping off, and the way we got connected was through Las Patronas Yay. Restaurant. Round of applause, <laughs> round of applause. Yay. Yeah. Thank you for inviting us. <laughs> and so we have Eddie Yazbek mm-hmm. in the house and his lovely wife, Iris Yazbek, in the house. Hi. Thank Hello. you guys. Thank you guys thank so much. No, thank you for inviting us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no, it was, uh, I, I, I really, I really, uh, I always get excited, you know, when there's entrepreneurs, business owners that agree to come on here with us. And I know that it's, uh, I know that it's, uh, it takes a lot of you guys' time. So I really do appreciate it because I know you guys are busy. I know you guys uh, run multiple businesses, right? Mm-hmm. multiple yeah. businesses here in the inland empire and you guys also have a family right true that's <laughs> two, important two little babies <laughs> <laughs> two little babies yes how yeah. old are they one is three and a half and the other one is one and a half so three and a half and one and a half mm-hmm. so you guys got your hands full <laughs> yeah believe me man a lot of work yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's that's awesome and uh, and so today we we brought them on the show and like i said um the way that i got a hold of you guys was through Las Patronas restaurant and I know that's one of many of you guys' business and um, and so I know it's been getting a lot of buzz it's been getting a lot of buzz and and I know that you guys just recently opened up the second location right here in the city that of San correct. Bernardino yeah yeah how long ago did you guys open that um we just complete two months so it's barely two months okay yeah, I thought it was longer okay. no that's Rialto and yeah. the one in San Bernardino it's it's almost nine months but it's been incredible incredible yeah. journal yeah no I, I i follow you guys on instagram and so i'm always mm-hmm. seeing what's happening and and it's amazing to see how you guys are working it it gets me excited you know just kind of like what we we're talking about earlier i really have a heart and a passion you know for what san bernardino can be you know not mm-hmm. for what it is right now not for what people see it right now but for what it can be and and i know we'll get into a little bit of that but um, tell us a little bit. I always like to kind of get some backstory just to kind of break the ice. So I don't know who wants to go first. Uh, tell us a little bit where you're from, where your upbringing is. Who wants to go first? Ladies first? Ladies I'll first, go, of ladies. course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you bro- uh, so I broke the ice. Um, so my name is Iris Jasbeck. Uh, I'm born in Arizona. I grew up all my life in Mexico. That's why it takes me a little bit to, to catch the English. I, I come when I was already an adult. And um, I come by myself, and pretty much uh, I come like any other people comes to to California from Mexico, knowing nothing about the state, knowing nothing yeah. about anything else that you have back on Mexico. So yeah, um, that's that's from where I come. I, my family is from uh, my father from Sinaloa, my mother from Sonora. Okay. And I grew up most of my life in Agua Prieta, Sonora. Okay, okay, yeah. It's a little town. Yeah, I mean it's Sonora, Sonora. I mean Sinaloa, all that. Like it's how yeah. was your how was your experience growing up in Mexico, though? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, you know, it it was really beautiful. My family is from a middle class. They always been like entrepreneurs, and they were like my mother. Um, always having their her own business my father as well so i was the little kid that works since i was a, a baby yeah that goes and check the 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 store and this and that so yeah. i was i was used to work a lot yeah and but at the same time um 
I was I was growing with the ethic that I want to do something. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's always a beautiful thing that when um, and I don't know if you want to you know even chime in on that, but how cool is that when you do grow up in a, an environment when you do see you know your parents your family working towards something or building or managing something of their own doesn't that motivate you doesn't that does of something course. to you of yeah. course yeah. i was all the time like uh i saw my mom uh she used to have a a, a big clinic she was really really known in 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 the city she used to have a, a spa salon and 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 she's um, um, in the medical field. Okay. So I just to saw her and say, like, I want to do something like her that makes yeah. her so happy. Yeah. But in this, something that I like. Yeah. But she motivates me a lot to, to be better and to try to make my things happen. Right. Yeah, I know that. To that, hit my goal. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And so, and Mexico is so beautiful, you know. I yeah. always tell people, people that have listened to my story, I... I I since I was a little kid, uh, we would go back and forth a lot to Mexico to visit, and then I eventually ended up living there for two years. I ended up living there in Michoacan for two years, and I always tell people that was one of the best times of my life. You know, it yeah. really was. I was 13 years old all the way up until I was 15, and and I got to really learn what hard work was, you mm-hmm. know, and the value of hard work, you know, and to really see hard work pay off. You know, yeah. that was one of the beautiful things because over there, it's uh, I always tell people I. I don't know who we we're talking to. I think it was with um, the owner of, uh, I think it was Jose, the owner of Tacos y Mas. Mm-hmm. We we're talking about that, how it's so interesting when you do look at your roots, when you look at uh, yeah. people from other countries and things like that. When you take a look at them, like they all really did have an entrepreneur spirit because they really did fend for themselves. They were always working, there, whether they were working their lands or, you know, they would open up a tiendita right there in the mm-hmm. corner or something. Like, they were always mm-hmm. fending for themselves and they were always gathering and, and looking out to how to make money, how to provide for their family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's why for us as a couple, it was really organic because the story of my husband is a little bit kind of different. But at the, at the same time, the same. We both come from a little town. Yeah. We both come from the same type of, of family. And it was very organic for us to to hustle every day, like to be seven days a week, to not have a a day off. And because we come from the same background, Mm -hmm. even when we are miles and miles apart from where we're coming from. Yeah. So now, which leads me to to you, Eddie. Yes, sir. <laughs> you still a little nervous, Eddie? It's no, okay. No, I'm fine. Yeah, fine. no, that's good. It's just the first time, but yeah, I'm good. Yeah, so so Eddie, tell us, because yeah, I, I know a lot of people are going to be very interesting that don't know you, because even mm-hmm. me, I thought, you know, I confused you. I thought you were Mexican. <laughs> yes, a lot, of, a lot of people do. They think right? I'm from which state, babe? They tell me Sinaloa? That. No, it's, it's a small city or something. No, they always think that he's from Jalisco. From Jalisco, Jalisco yeah. Jalisco, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, like Jalisco or Sinaloa, because, <laughs> yeah, you know, they got the light guy, complex, yeah. tall, yeah, barbon, yeah. you know. Yeah, like, there's a lot of people, they get confused with me and they start talking to me Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> they say, hold on, hold on, habla poquito español, no, no mucho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. And then mm-hmm. it's funny because, and then we get confused with a lot, you know. Well, tell us, before we get into that, tell us where you're from, um, Eddie. Okay, uh, my name is Eddie Yazbek. Uh, I'm from Lebanon. It's way in the Middle East. It's a small country. It's even smaller than California, but it's a very beautiful country. Um, and I came from, I can say, a mid-class uh, family. Um, my parents used to own clothing factory, which okay. my mom used to run. Oh, wow. Okay. And my dad came uh, from a military background. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I... At what age did you uh, come here to the United States? 2019. Oh, okay. So, so okay. So, so not yeah. too long. So you're just no. four years. Yes. Nice, nice. Yes, sir. And how, how was that uh, growing up there in the Middle East, there in Lebanon? It's awesome. Um, first of all, it's a nice country, as I yeah. said. And we have a lot of social life there. It's way different than here. Here you have to go working from the morning until night. You don't see your friends, your family, your sisters. Yeah. Over there... As much as you work, you can still do all that. This is the nice thing about there. Yeah. So we used to hang out with your friends every night, play cards, watch movies, go yeah. places. You know, this is the opportunity about uh, being growing there in that country. It's really beautiful. Yeah. I'm glad that you brought that up because mm-hmm. I think that 
we we are missing something here in yeah. Western culture. We we really are because even when I travel to Mexico, um, we've also had the opportunity to travel to um, um, uh, to other. I've been to Nicaragua, to El Salvador. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We even one time we took a trip to to Paris to France, and the life in these places they're so. Different. They look happier. Yeah. Let's just say it that way. <laughs> they 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 look happier in the sense of like they're they balance their time mm -hmm. better. Like they work hard, but then at the same time they don't let go of, you know, that social life. That sometimes True. I feel like sometimes Western culture we mm -hmm. we adapt because yeah, we're always yeah. on the hustle. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have that much stress as we have here. This yeah. is why, yeah. 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 Why why do you think that is? I I I, I believe because here economy. Um, the price the economy yeah. yeah everything is more way more expensive yeah. so you have to keep working the hustle to keep up with everything yeah that's why you don't have enough time to do all what you need to do yeah no mm -hmm. i i agree i agree because yeah. especially like in mexico you know when we go you know i look um you know my family and they don't have to worry about their mortgage yeah. you know they, they don't True. most of they the don't, people own their houses they own their Mexico. lands yeah, yeah. True. True. and all they're paying is for is just el gas you know the gas and, and and water and, you know, uh, certain essentials, you know, their their daily needs, their food and stuff like that. So there, a lot of that stress is lifted off. Yeah. So yeah. majority of our culture, they build their houses by their own. So they don't have mortgage, they don't have rent, they have nothing. Yeah. Like my dad built like most of our house by himself, imagine. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's that's awesome, mm -hmm. man. And, and what did that do for you seeing that in there in Lebanon and seeing your parents and seeing them, you know, uh, own and work the factory and all that. Well, I believe it motivates you and encourages you to do something like them to make them kind of proud of you. So um, it's it's really amazing how you yeah. look uh, to the old people, how they used to manage everything and how they used to work hard and still take care of the family, you know, yeah. it's really amazing. Yeah. And then your dad, you said that he had a military background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how was that? How was that? Was he... Because, you know, you hear stories here of people that their parents were in military and they were very disciplined, very strict. Was that the case with you? Um, he's so lovely. He's strict in yeah. how we, he wants us to be, like, um, perfect in everything. Yeah. Um, everything has to be fault under the rules and the law and everything. He's a very strict guy, as you said. Yeah. But he's very lovely. Uh, he retired before I was born, actually. He, he okay. served, like, 18 years. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. So they so they had you later on in in life, mm -hmm. and I, I noticed that that's another thing too is that um, you know having kids in in at certain cultures and and it is they tend to wait a little bit longer. Was that the case? Is that something that you would see there in Lebanon a lot? I didn't understand this question. Sorry. So, so would they would they wait to have kids like oh. later in years or or because you know here in the United States mm -hmm. a lot of times it's I mean it's kind of changing too. But before you would see a lot of young parents. Okay, the the old culture over there, like my mom was married when she was sixteen years old. Okay. My sister, my older sister, she was married when she was fifteen. So no, they do their job really early. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So we, so we, there are a lot of similarities they with just Mexicans. Have a lot. <laughs> yeah. and he was the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you were the youngest. Yeah, yeah. I, I was the youngest after four sisters and one brother. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So four four sisters. And one brother. One brother and then you. And me. So a total of six. Of six. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So your parents were, they were, they were busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were busy. Holy time. <laughs> yeah. What about you? How many, I didn't, I don't think I asked you, how many brothers and sisters? I do have only one sister. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, she's an older than me and. Okay. So you're shower. the baby too. I'm the baby. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And um, so what made you decide to want to come to the United States? Well, I came here for a visit, just, okay, just for a visit, and I used to live in Loma Linda. Okay. So, so now you will get to the story how we met me and my wife. All right, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the secret. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to live in Loma Linda, and my visit was just for four weeks. Okay. So one day I was craving uh, Thai food. Okay. So I Google a place like nearby, and it came like right next to where I used to live. So I went there. And with my lucky <laughs> angels, <laughs> they were looking at me. Yeah. My wife was standing right in front of me in the line. Oh, wow. So I told myself, oh, my God, I, sh I, I should not leave this place <laughs> without this girl with me. But how am I going to talk to her? How am I going to yeah. do it? 
So I was thinking to myself, and there was like two, three people in front of her still on the line waiting <laughs> to order. Um, so her keychain fell from her in that moment that I was thinking. So I said, that's, 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 that's my chance. That's your chance right there, yeah. <laughs> so I grabbed her key, and I guess it was the key of her heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we start talking at that moment, and we end up uh, sitting, dining together, okay. knowing each other more. And since that time, we're never apart. <laughs> nice. Oh, so you guys ended up having lunch together at that at yeah. that moment. Okay. <laughs> Which Thai food spot? Because I know a few, right? I know a couple right there. In, uh, I think it's, his, it's called Thai Spoon or something. Thai, thai Spoon. spoon mm -hmm. Right there on Redlands Boulevard. Yeah. It's, it's on Barton Road, I think. Barton. Oh. It's close okay. to La Malinda Hospital. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I know which one you guys are talking about. Yeah, because yeah, they have like two, really three sure good about, ones. I'm not sure about the name, but it's a really yeah. small uh, place and amazing food. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, really amazing. Yeah. We, lo we, we love Thai we food. We still go. Yeah. <laughs> Thai food is one of the... I, I remember the first time tasting Thai food, I said, wow, like what have I been missing out? Yeah. Uh, you're you're mm -hmm. only used to Chinese food. Yeah. That's the most typical. Mm -hmm. But once I tried Thai food, I was like, oh man, so... So that was that's awesome to hear that you guys met at a Thai Thai restaurant. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what was your what were your first uh, impressions, your first thoughts when when you guys met? Well, I saw him and I was like, I think when you are ready to to start something like to open your heart, God it m moves that uh, that type of thing on on, on you because yeah. I was like, I believe that he was just trying to to play around and uh, <laughs> I, I I didn't answer him what was my name or anything and then um, for some reason I feel like I should trust him and I should talk to him and everything yeah. and we just see it because he was visiting uh, California yeah. and we start talking and everything and he decided to stay okay. after three days he said you <laughs> he know said what <laughs> I'm, I decided yeah. to stay and I'm gonna ask my mother to put my business uh, for sale because I'm staying here. So you were you were you had your business out there and, and yeah, yes. he has nothing mm -hmm. to do here. Yeah. It was just a pure love. Yeah, wow. A pure love story that even until today is still um, very um, unique. Yeah. We have a big family and everything and and we is is it was like the as I say with the business, it was really organic because yeah. all, both of us were in, like in the age that we were ready to to start a family yeah. to to have a serious relationship uh, before yeah. before him, I used to had couple relationships, but I wasn't ready. I was I, I was really young, and I didn't yeah. take the things like as I take it with him. Yeah, and maybe maybe you can speak into that. Maybe both of you guys can speak into that. How important it is to you know, because I, I don't think we ever know when the right time is, right? I don't mm -hmm. think we ever really know, you exactly. know. Exactly. But how important is it for us to personally, emotionally get ready? Because like you said right now, yeah. you said something very important that, you know what, it just felt ready. You know, I've been mm -hmm. uh, through other relationships <laughs> and and I had to mature, things like that. Like, what what's some advice or some things that you could say um, for somebody that's listening? Well... The most important thing is not about age because uh, there's a lot of successful uh, families that yeah. they start really young. Right. We start a little bit late, mm -hmm. but in our personality, this is how we need. This is what we need. Like uh, he he was like like re really like um, rebel like me when we were young. We party a lot. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of stuff, and then we end up getting tired of of relationships and everything we yeah. start focusing on ourselves so when we met each other we were in the point that we were focusing on ourselves we love ourselves we were yeah. secure of ourselves and everything so we don't need someone to come and protect us we just need to uh to bond to get to know each other uh -huh. yeah. to bond to make something yeah and is is the reason why i say we were ready but it depends on every situation i right. saw i saw some of my cousins that they marry at the age of 18 but they were they were always um like getting ready for that and they and they have a very uh successful family and so right. it depends but in my case i think uh it was that I, in the case of eddie we were ready after many things yeah no 100 percent. you want to kind of chime in a little bit Eddie? um well 
according to my experience, what how how we make this happen actually when you when you find all what you imagine in the lady of your dreams in one person, mm-hmm. I think it's the right moment to not let it go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's everything come organic. You can't, you can't like plan something. Oh, I yeah. have to settle down now or something. Everything has to come organic. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. I love, yeah. I love both of you guys' perspective because it does speak into both like where you can't really necessarily plan something, exactly. but at the same time, you know, what you do in the background to get ready so that you can identify that moment. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of times in our culture is we're so busy trying to figure things out that a lot of times we don't work on ourselves and say, hey, you know what, like, how can I work on myself so that when that time does come, Mm -hmm. I'm ready, you know, and and that's what it sounds like that you guys did what you guys had to do. You guys, you know, let life take its its toll, take Mm -hmm. its role. And then lo and behold, (laughs) The Thai spoon came and <laughs> and you guys happen to be in the same place yes, at the yes. same time. So that that's that's amazing. And um, moving on from that though, so it what what was what would you guys say, or were there any um, issues or struggles as far as because you guys come from two complete different cultures, right? Yeah. Well, how was that? I can say, to my experience, I I discovered that the Mexican race is really close to our culture. Yeah, is really close. So I, I with me and her, we didn't feel that difference. Like between, yeah. of course, you, there's some stuff you have to you know work work on it. And, but like majority of the things, I I can say like eighty percent, we kind of like the same culture. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you, you just have to be open mind. You just have to yeah. To, if you love that person, then yeah. you have to bond your culture with the other one. And this is how I feel, yeah. Eddie. Like right now, he he works with me in Patronas mm-hmm. like he's Mexican. Yeah. And when yeah. I'm with his family, I'm a Lebanese. I'm, uh, I'm like, I respect his culture as they respect mine. They don't ask me to be someone else. So yeah. I I try to do the same with them. and I And I try to... To bond with uh, with the culture. Sometimes they tell me like, "Oh, you are like Lebanese," and same thing yeah. happens to Eddie with uh, the people that works with us. They're like, "Oh, he's my Liba- my Mexican Lebanese," <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think it's because they feel it from our passion. We yeah. we we just like open to to show our our kids uh, our ethnicity and 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 make them proud of them. Yeah, that's beautiful. That really mm-hmm. is because. Um, I think we can learn a lot from that because a lot of times when people, especially couples, right? A lot of times um, there's that defensiveness sometimes. Well, it's like, hey, well, if you if you love me, then you're going to accept me for who I am. And if mm-hmm. your family loves me, then they're going to accept me for who I am. And it's true. But at the same time, I think that as like you said right now, as a form of respect, exactly. sometimes, you know, when we... If, because if we love each other, mm-hmm. you know, then, you know, your family might be a certain way or they might have certain beliefs or things like that. But if I love you, like I'm going to respect you and I'm going to respect your family, exactly. you know, because yeah. I know that you love and respect your family mm-hmm. and you want to do the best by them. You know, so I'm going to do everything within me, you know, and, and I even love what you said right now is like not so much that I have to become exactly like them. You know, they accept me for who I am, but you're willing to go that extra mile to the point where they're like, you know, you're 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 Lebanese, you know, or you mm-hmm. like, you're, hey, you're just Mexican. I dance with them mm-hmm. yeah. and I eat their food and I do everything as my husband do for yeah. me. The first time that my family comes is when he asked me to get married with him. And the second time it was in our um, wedding. Yeah. And he never saw a Mexican family. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People dancing cumbias and uh, we yell at each other and they looks like we're angry and we're not. It's just the way we speak, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and stuff like that. And he yeah. was like, wait a second. But then yeah. he bumped and he started being another one of us. Yeah. And this is how he teach me that I have to do the same type of thing when his family comes to the to us That's so awesome. i was like if he if he never asked me why 
why you're so Mexican. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, uh, why do you guys was, dance so much? <laughs> yeah. What's that the music? <laughs> yeah. And but he, besides that, he was like, okay, let's learn. Let's let's. What is this? Is is this uh, regional music? What is this? Uh, what, how you call yeah. this music? And everything and the food, he he got attracted to the food since <laughs> day one. He yeah. was like, I think the first thing that he ate it was it was birria and then oh my tacos. God. Oh, I love it. <laughs> and yeah. until today, he he can eat birria and tacos every day. And, oh yeah. And, but he was like obsessed since day one because he wants to understand my my roots. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's a. Uh, that's really cool. I really. I really. I really like hearing things like that because again it 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 really does sometimes like as a, when you're talking to young couples especially like this next generation that's coming up mm -hmm. I feel like there's a, a there's a big need in the next generation where they're they're surrounding their identities they're they're coming to 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 know their they're more aware of their identity that's the word I'm looking for mm -hmm. they're more aware of who they are and their identities but a lot of times they don't leave room to be able to welcome other people or other cultures mm -hmm. or other yeah, differences, you know, in their life, you know, and that's one of the things that I'm always worried about. You know, it's mm -hmm. even like with my kids, like that's why I try to teach them, you know, like, hey, you know, like you always look at someone in the eye, always shake their hand, you know, always say because it's it's a way of, of respect, you know, of welcoming other people, welcoming other cultures you know, getting to, because that's the only way we get to know, you know, yeah. a lot of times we come and this is who I am, accept me for who I am. And if exactly. you don't accept me for who I am, well, well, I'll cut you off, you know, and I'll mm -hmm. move on. And that's such a ugly way to live, you know, yeah. because then you don't get to know the beauty of each other's culture. Yeah. At the end, we are all brother in humanity. So when yeah. God created us, he didn't create us like not to, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we just learned different languages and that's how, how it happened. Exactly. Different languages, <laughs> different foods, yeah. which yeah. by the way, Lebanese food is awesome. It's it bomb. is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It is good. Me yeah. Me Mexican Lebanese fusion, eh? Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is, we're, this we're is an idea that, that yeah. might coming soon, yeah. We're yeah. working on that, but we want to do that uh, when we have a little bit more budget because we, yeah. Lebanese food is, is is more luxury, so yeah, it's a big mm -hmm. investment. Yeah, what's one of the what's like a a, 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 um, a very typical famous delicious dish or your favorite top dish like a Lebanese dish? Um, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot, but what we famous in is maybe the salad they call the tabbouleh. Okay. So, yeah, and the falafel, that's pure Lebanese. And we have the pastry, it's called manoushi. It's, um, it's, uh, it's kind of the dough, that pastry that has uh, herbs and stuff on top. And okay. Oh, yeah, it's really good. And yeah. you, you bake it. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's... Yeah, that that would be that would be something interesting to see. Yeah. So. Oh, I have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love food. Uh, any, uh, you name it, like Chinese, Thai. Yeah. But I'm obsessed with Lebanese uh, as well, so I have a lot. <laughs> That's gonna be awesome to, to she, see she, in the future. You learn how to cook Lebanese as well. Not even. Yeah. Uh, not oh really? Even Mexican yeah. Food, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you so you know how to cook it too? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a nice. chef. Nice. And Patronas, I I build mo most of the of the menu, and okay, I'm the one that cooks uh most of the things that that we end up putting on the menu so now oh, she's wow. international cook as well because she learned the, <laughs> the Lebanese, Lebanese food as yeah. well mm -hmm. yeah no yeah. that's that's awesome and so yeah so well we like we got to know get to know you guys a little bit more so now we want to kind of go into some of the things that I, I i really feel is going to really stand out and help people and even right now you kind of got into it and as far as you know i didn't know that you guys that you built your menu for las yeah. patronas that's awesome that's awesome and and one of the things though that really stood out to me what you guys said earlier is that in four years in four years four and a half years mm -hmm. you guys have been able to establish four different businesses yes let's, amen that's that's <laughs> awesome let's talk about that what impulse you guys, you know, I know you guys kind of um, talked about it earlier that your upbringing, your parents and things like that. But what really impulse you guys to say, we meet, we let's get this started. Let's go. OK, so when I first got here, um, after we met me and wife and everything and after we start dating. OK, we got married three months after we, we start dating, so 
we have no time to lose yeah. and we have no time to waste. So I said, hey, we need to get something starting. Yeah. So we were talking about what to do. And she, she used to work in, a, she used to own an insurance office. She do insurance and all this stuff. Okay. Im- immigration insurance, DNV. Not making enough to Corporati- pay the bills. Corporations and stuff. Yeah. So. Um, day by day. When we used yeah. to go out on the road, all what I've seen on the road are trucks, trailers, containers. More than I see vehicles, cars. Yeah. I said my wife, why? I said, the economy here is so powerful. Like, there's a lot of economy going here, especially yeah. logistics. And I said, I think this is the right place where to start. Because when I came from there, I used to own my uh, my gym, and I used okay. to own a, a hookah lunch. Okay, okay. So I decided to keep the gym, but I asked my parents to, to get rid of the hookah lunch because it needs more uh, attention. Right. So I tell her, hey, I think we need to do something in regard to the logistics, and I think I know what it is. I ask her, hey, these containers that they arrive every day, every day in from all the world to California. Mm-hmm. Who take care of these containers? Mm-hmm. And I think these people, the warehouses, they need help. I don't think, because um, there's a lot, you know? Yeah. And at this time, COVID starts. So a lot of people lose their jobs. Mm-hmm. A lot of entrepreneurs, they close down. Mm-hmm. And I, tell her, I think this is the right time to start. So... I decided to go and apply in a staffing agency and get a job just to figure out the business from the bottom. Mm. So I worked like for three or four months unloading container by hand. And until the day I tell my wife, okay, I'm ready. All what I need from you, because she used to do corporations and uh, insurance. Okay. So I want a corporation, insurance and everything legal. Get it ready for me and I'll, I'll, I'm going to start said, no way. I said, yeah, I'm telling you. So after after like two or three weeks, so I convinced her. She she's, she wasn't taking me that serious. So she finally did it. I said, hey, your corporation <laughs> is ready. I said, wow, okay. Now it's your turn to go get clients. So I went out on my first day sales because I already built connections. Okay. I closed two clients in the first in the first day. Two big warehouses. Two big warehouses. Wow. And they're still my clients until that moment. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that was my start in logistics. Um, We start from day one. I I don't say it's because I'm smart or because I'm strong. I I would say it's first because it's a bless from God. Yeah. Yeah, because as much as you are good, if you don't have the God bless, there's nothing can happen. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, thank God we we grew up this country this uh, company really fast. Yeah, and um, from this company we decide to open a staffing agency because they're kind of brothers. Yeah, they kind of they so, complement each other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this company, the first one that we opened was Yazbek Services. It's just a pure lumber service. Lumber service. We just provide service to the warehouses to unload their containers. We send them labor to unload their containers. Okay, so. A lot of my clients used to ask me, hey, why don't you have hourly labor for us? Why don't you have, like, we s- sometimes we get small projects, like, for we need temporary employees that we don't want to hire. Mm-hmm. So, okay. I come to my wife and say, hey, <laughs> so we need another thing now. Yeah. Why don't we open a staffing agency next to it? And that was, that was next year of Yazbek Services. Yeah. Second year. Mm-hmm. Wow. So we did open the staffing agency. But since day one, Everywhere we go, my wife used to tell me, I wish I have a restaurant in this corner. And I wish I have a restaurant <laughs> in this corner. Yeah. And I never took her serious. I, I thought, I, I always tell her, look, a restaurant <laughs> is a hard and a lot of work. Just right. to know, I used to own something over there and I know it's a lot of work. Yeah. And something yeah. very small in a small country, nothing compared to here. So she used to always tell me, we need to get a restaurant. Yeah. So after the two years... Um, one day we were looking for an office in San Bernardino because most of my clients in the San Bernardino County. Right. So we used to have an office in Fontana. I tried, we need to get an office in San Bernardino. So she was looking online and trying to find out a good location. And one day she told me, Hey, I have a surprise for you. 
He thought it was an office. <laughs> and I said, okay, because we were looking for an office, you know? Yeah. So we went there, and guess what? It was a restaurant. <laughs> said, oh, my God. <laughs> I fell in love with the, with the restaurant, with, with the place. Yeah. It was a second, it was a second generation location? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it was a super old building. It's an old building, but it's a freestanding building, and um, it needs a lot of remodelation and stuff. Yeah. But I don't know when I went inside. My hair like goes up. I f- I felt like we need to get this place. Yeah. And we had um, in front of us some customers. They were talking to the owner and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I looked at my wife. I said, "What you like it?" And she said, "Yeah." I said, "You want it?" And she said, yeah, okay, you got it, don't worry. But they're talking to them first, so don't worry. So I talked to the owner when they left, said, hey, I want this place. No matter how much they pay you, put more and I want it. I said, are you serious you want it? I said, yeah, okay. We went the same day. We uh, did the, the application for the contract. And three days after, we got the keys. Nice. And that's how we started. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Real quick, before I before I ask some questions to you, um, Edis, I I I'm, I one of the things that stood out to me right now a lot, and it's one of the things uh, that really fascinates me about what you said right now, mm-hmm. is that because I think that that's the thing. Uh, 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 a lot of people they don't look for they look for they look for what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times like they just want to go after like a passion, for example. And and there's nothing wrong with that. But what I like about your story is that you didn't really necessarily go after a passion. You, Mm -hmm. you saw a need. Exactly. You saw a need and that you saw an opportunity. And I think a lot of, I think that's what kind of differentiates a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs is that they don't necessarily go after the passion they go after the opportunity, the need. And then what I love is that you were willing to say, hey, I'm going to go work for three, four months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's because that's one of the things that I always tell young people, like yeah. young men, young, I'm like, what, where you're at, what are you learning? Exactly. You know, like, what are you learning? Like where you're at, you say you want to do something else, but what opportunity, when have you taken the time to learn what you're doing, where you're at, like, and and I love that you brought that out because mm-hmm. it's like, boom, like there it is. That's a yeah. nugget right there, guys. Like, if you're listening to this, like, you know, a lot of times you you think you need the secret sauce, or there's mm-hmm. like this, you know, or something's just gonna come and shine the light. You know, mm-hmm. here's your opportunity. A lot of times the opportunities are coming from where you're at. You're just not opening your mind and your eyes to it. Exactly. And then what are, they're right in front of you. Exactly. Yeah. And then, like you said, like you were making connections, mm-hmm. you know, can you, you, do you want to, before we kind of move on to some more questions, do you want to kind of speak into that? Because, you know, maybe your mindset, like behind those type of things. Um, what is exactly what do you want me to speak about? Yeah, maybe maybe something encouraging to somebody about that. Because like I said, a lot of times people want to, man, what's my passion? You know, I want to get into business, okay. but what's my passion? Well, my passion, as I tell you, wasn't the, that. Yeah. As, as you realize, it was a need and it was where the money is. I saw where the money is. That's mm-hmm. where you have to go. So um, I, I believe everyone that that is willing to make it can make it. Yeah, you just need to have a solid heart. Um, no matter if you fell one time, you should stand up and and look for yourself again and stand up again. Love it. Um, nothing, nothing is too hard. Nothing is impossible. Love it. If everyone can do it, everyone else can do it. You or you or everyone can else do it as well. Yeah. So how these people make it is because they started and they didn't got scared. I have a lot of friends that. I always try to empower them. Why don't you do something? They were my coworkers when we start working and they're still an employees until now. And one of the guys, I always talk to him, why don't you do something for yourself? I want to see you success. I don't want to keep seeing you an employee. Mm-hmm. So I tell him, I don't know. I feel I'm scared. Why are you scared from? Mm-hmm. There's nothing scary. Put your stuff together. Look to the sky and ask God for bless and start. Yeah, nothing is, that's you have to you have to be strong and 
and put a line that, hey, I'm going to start from here and I'm not going to look backward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you could have put you could have put excuses. You could have said, oh, you know what? I'm I'm new to the country. I'm new in the USA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, your English is great, you know. But so so <laughs> yeah, Better than but, mine. <laughs> but so many people, but so many people use that as an excuse. You know, yeah. coming from a Mexican background myself, mm -hmm. you know, and seeing my family, I know that that's always been one of the biggest excuses. You know, and but you are a testament of, mm -hmm. hey, you know what, you came, you know, for you you found the love of your life, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. then and then you said, you know what, like. Uh, what am I going to do? And mm -hmm. and you didn't really necessarily say, well, what's my passion? Yeah. You know, but you said, where's the need? Where's the money? Exactly. Where where is where is there an opportunity to get something started to provide for my family? And then you just went for it. You know, so that that's awesome. My mm -hmm. passion before was sports, was into bodybuilding and gyms and weightlifting. That's yeah. what I came from. That's what I used to want a gym before there. But when I look here. I didn't see that it's a good um, way to go. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of gyms. The memberships are very cheap. And yeah. A lot of competition. A lot of competition. Yeah, I didn't yeah. see it's a good job here. That's why I look where we can produce money. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know what is the biggest passion about our businesses, uh, Jorge? Um, is to be able to give jobs to a lot of families and see them how they're yeah. happy That's and they're working. This is the biggest passion. That was a dream awesome. come through in the yeah. COVID when, yeah, because people think that in the COVID was, uh, uh, there was two sides on the COVID. There was right. the side of the people that they are ready, like set up in California and they know how to look for help. Yeah. And then the other people that they just don't know and they're just struggling because yeah. there's nothing to do. They close down offices, uh, restaurants, and a lot of stuff. And yeah. I used to receive a lot of phone calls when we barely opened the, the company. And they were like, I'm looking for a job desperate. So yeah. it was, I think it was my motivation. I, this is when I, okay, well, we start a business that it wasn't my passion because food is my passion. But when I start seeing their faces, I find that uh my second passion is human resources, that it was to help people and yeah. that to motivate them to 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 not give up, to not move yeah. to another state, to not get back to yeah. to to see for their families. And that was that was the most beautiful part. That yeah. COVID was a, a, a good opportunity for us to grow yeah. and to let other people stand up. That's awesome. Yeah. And and. And I, I couldn't agree more with that. COVID really did show two sides. You know, it it, it showed um, for a lot of people, you know, they they did lose a lot, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of it was because they didn't know what to do, you know. And and so for you guys to have been able to be be a light during that time, you know, for, for a lot of families, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. And I think that that's always one of the most rewarding things. And I think a lot of people need to understand that, that business owners, you know, apart from being business owners and owning and running the business and everything, you know, they provide a great value to society. And that's, you know, to be able to provide jobs, employment for people. Um, it's I think there's there's nothing it's it always takes me back to that saying where it says um, there's a saying that says, uh, you know, you give a man a fish and you'll feed him for a day, but you teach a man how to fish and you'll feed him for the rest of your life, you yeah. know, for the rest of their life, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I think business owners, you know, really are in a privileged place because they're like, man, you know what? I can, my, I, I, I can go and yeah, we can give this and give that. But at the end of the day, what difference is it going to make? But when you guys are able to provide jobs for people and then those jobs are able to provide for their families, that's a blessing, man. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's awesome. So let's kind of talk about, so you guys are up and running two years mm -hmm. and then Edie's, you're like, I, I need a restaurant. I want a restaurant. <laughs> you know you what? <laughs> the story is, it's like that. When we start dating, like I think our third date, uh, we went to a, a little restaurant in Rancho Cucamonga that they do sushi. Okay. It's a Japanese place, but okay. it's like, I'll say like 15 to 20 tables. It's a small place. It's really clean. The 
that food tastes really, really, really fresh. And they take their time. They even close at the, at the middle of the day to clean up all the restaurant. And for me, as a almost foodie, because I love food, yeah. is something that <laughs> drives me crazy. I appreciate that. So it was one of my favorite restaurants. Yeah. And is I it mean, sushi martini? No, it's uh. It's sakatomi sushi. Yeah. Sakatomi sushi. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good spot. I like she that. She used one. to always tell me I would love to have a restaurant like this space all the time. Yeah, <laughs> but in my culture, like Mexican. Yeah. But I said, you see this place? I want, I want something like that, and yeah. I want something that because I, I saw the owner that he was around mm -hmm. one day or something, and I say I want something that, that. It can motivate me to to do my passion, to cook, to go talk to people, to yeah. to even for people that is not of my culture to to understand my my culture, to yeah. to love my food and everything. And I think he didn't take me that serious. <laughs> uh, and when we when we start uh, building our business, and it was very very moving, very good, and everything. Uh, I always said like we close let's say a warehouse in Chino. And I said, oh, I want, uh, you see that corner is empty. And you see that corner is empty. But three of our biggest clients were in San Bernardino. And this is when I started getting more motivated to be at the beginning on San Bernardino. Yeah. I start, I start like getting known in the area and everything. And I, and I saw that there was a lot of nice people, a lot of opportunity. It's a very beautiful community. Yeah. And and I start seeing places. Also, I see the opportunity, as my husband seen before, the opportunity yeah. with the warehouses. I see the opportunity because this, this city is a little bit lost. And the rents were more uh, easy to get. Right. The, the places uh, were more, um, there was a lot by the way so i start seeing a lot and i hear from a lot of friends why you went in san bernardino you're just gonna give food to hum uh, to homeless and to different things they yeah. say and i say no i was secure because i have my people from the warehouses yeah. the people that i've been giving job and i saw those families and i was exactly. like no San Bernardino is beautiful and yeah. they have a lot of beautiful community and and it's uh, it's going to it's going to happen and it's going to be blessed and I decide to keep looking and then um I my husband and I decide to move the office from from, from Fontana to San Bernardino and we start looking for a, an office in San Bernardino and this is when I decide I say I think it's a good opportunity to 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 start view, to start working on my passion to persuade my my um my goal your dream my the dream, dream yeah. and um I bring him to the to that place and he say that when he saw my face this is when he believes me yeah yeah um he knows I know how to cook he knows I know how to manage people he knows I'm very social um I'm a little bit shy in English uh, I don't speak the same level than in Spanish but I've been doing marketing for many other businesses in Spanish. I was like mm -hmm. uh, helping for many years in, uh, since I moved to California to 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 do marketing for other businesses and everything. So he knows I can move something, but he didn't take me serious. Yeah. Uh, so because it was the first business that it was going to come from my mind, from my brain. The other ones he bring them and I make it happen. Right. I bring the people and and everything. But this one, it was different. So he he say he say that he saw my eyes shining when it was something that it needs a lot of help. It was um, it was kind of old the building. You need to to fix a lot of stuff. And he was mentioning to me like, no, what about if we find something like a little bit more at the beginning, mm -hmm. a little bit more like. Um, ready to like move, ready like, to move in and yeah. yeah and and i say no it is a street is, is it has a lot of opportunity yeah. it's very known and i have my own ideas but when he saw the 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 shine on my eyes he yeah. said 
I think this is. It's like this is it. This is it. <laughs> yeah, she fell in love. As she fell in love. It's your, in. your passion, and since day one, I take it like in a different way. So it's two types. Like you can you can open a business because the money is there, but also if it's your passion. Yeah. No matter where you are, because where you at, because there's a lot of people that has lines and lines and lines in a little taco stand. Right. But you find that their food is like amazing. Right, right. The hole in the walls that they call it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I yeah. my my carnicero, he has a small shop in San Bernardino, and I saw the, the way that people follows him. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Which carniceria is that? Is Carnes it the... and mariscos? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. the same thing. It's his passion. He finds the best product. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is what happened when 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 you. Either or, either you go by your passion or you go where the money is. But if it's your passion, no matter where you put yourself, mm -hmm. there's, there's a saying in Mexico, el perico donde quiera es verde. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter where is your opportunity. If you if you bring your passion and it's going to be a good product, believe me, I have clients that they come from yeah. Riverside, from Hesperia, from Victor, from L.A., yeah. And they come just because they saw that they like the concept. They like that it's, it's like a, a small restaurant with fresh food and my say that is comida, no caricaturas. Yeah. That is like, that means like food, not cartoons. Yeah, like we're not playing. No, we're not we're playing not around. Playing. This, <laughs> is this, food. Is, this, this is, is food. Yeah. This is food. This is food. Yeah. And and they come and they talk to me and they're like, oh my god, it works to drive. Yeah, and that's yeah. when um, when you feel like every every single thing, every single money that you spend, because we work a lot to get into the point that we were able to open a restaurant. Yeah, um, it worked. Yeah, no, and and you could and you can see it. You could really see it, like behind the marketing, behind the social media, and everything. And even right now, when you're talking about it. You do. You light up with it. And, mm -hmm. and and I couldn't agree more that, you know, wherever you stand, you know, it doesn't matter the location. It doesn't. When you do something with passion, you know, it's going to show. It's going to reflect, you know, and, and it's going to be contagious. Mm -hmm. I really believe that that's one of the things about passion is that when because a lot of times pe it, I think there's a difference between interest and passion. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people can say, yeah, I'm interested in that. And they can say, I'm passionate about it. But in reality, they're just interested. Exactly. Passion is like you're different, putting different, everything, right? like your heart. Like you can taste the food in you it. You feel alive. You exactly. feel it. You know, you you feel the hospitality. It's like I always say it's kind of like, a, you know, la comida de la abuelita. You know, like yeah. the, the food from the grandma. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like it, I, I, that's one of the things that I love about going to Mexico is that it's the most simplest food that can come and be served to you at a table but the passion, the love behind it, it just those makes frijoles. those beans are like never before. It's like like yeah. it's it comes out and 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 I really believe that that's one of the things that um, San Bernardino is missing. You know, I I really don't believe because like you said earlier, a lot of people see the city of San Bernardino and they see it overshadowed by all the bad stuff that are happening. But if you really think about it, there's so many other cities that are big cities that have the same exact problems. Yes. But what's happening is that there are passionate business owners, intentional business owners in these places. Like if you go to L.A., like, man, L.A. is it ugly. Up. It's bad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But what keeps people going there? And I think that one of the things that you said earlier is that you were able to see the families through the warehouses, through all these other jobs. You saw the beautiful people that are in the city. And I believe that as a city, we need to just provide something where all these people can come to, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're going to be able to eventually overshadow all the bad, you know? Because, I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, there's always going to be problems, you yeah. know? You know what, Jorge? I, I, I face the same thing as she faced. I have friends in Orange County and yeah. San Diego, and they tell me, why San Bernardino? Yeah. I tell them, why not San Bernardino? I love San Bernardino. San Bernardino is a nice city. Mm -hmm. um, I believe the biggest 
some of the biggest entrepreneurs they start in San Bernardino, like McDonald's is like two minutes away from my restaurant. Yeah. Uh, Stater Brother start in San Bernardino. Expo Logistics starts here. Burlington yeah. as well, and many more. They yeah. start in San Bernardino. There is a reason why. Um, mm-hmm. I believe the city is beautiful. The people are beautiful. It's just been left from the government. They need to pay attention more about it. A hundred percent. And about the homeless situation, every city can have the, that issue. It's not only San Bernardino. Right. Uh, anything else? I've been here three, four years. I never felt five percent my life in danger in San Bernardino. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I think it's more it's about to build the community to, you know, like I feel right now with social media, we can do fantastic things. Mm-hmm. Um, when I opened the restaurant, this is when I discover more. Um, you can do a lot of negative stuff on, on social media, but also you can do fantastic things that build your community. Yeah. When I barely open San Bernardino, yes, I do have some people that I know from San Bernardino, but it was a new thing. It was a restaurant. And believe me or not, all these people from the warehouses, they take time to go to my restaurant. At the yeah. beginning, it was just neighbors. Yeah. It was just people around. It was just people that come and say, hey, hi, I have my business one block away. Yeah. Or I live two blocks from here, and I saw that you work a lot and, and um, re- like remodeling this, this building. I want to see how's your food. And this is when I start building my, my type of um, regulars. Yeah. I have regulars that they just live one block uh, away and yeah. they go every day there. And I found that this is what is about San Bernardino. We need more to focus and keep the money on the same city. Yeah. Keep mm-hmm. the economy in the same city in yeah. order to rebuild San Bernardino and yeah, then exactly. support each other. There is no competence. I can have, I think I do have one, two, three four Mexican restaurants around the same block. Yeah. And I never seen them as a competence. Yeah. I see I see that if if there's more, there, then it's going to be more platform from us to bring the people in San Bernardino because yeah. there's a lot of people that live in San Bernardino and it's weekend and they're like going out. Exactly. Yeah. And spending their economy in other yeah. cities. Going to LA. Even even Orange us County. restaurant owners, we we go and eat every week out in Mexican restaurant and yeah. whatever like around us just to support the, the local businesses. Yeah. Because yeah. that's the right way to keep the money rolling in your company. Yeah. E- exactly. I mm-hmm. man, a hundred percent, a hundred, a hundred percent. Business empowerment. This it, is how we have. It has to be like. Like they start doing the woman empowerment and it gets yeah. a big, big movement. Yeah. This is what I think San Bernardino needs a lot. Business empowerment. Yeah. A lot of business owners that say, I'll help you. I'll help yeah. you. And I'll help you. Yeah. And and this is what's, when is the magic gonna, is going to start happening. Yeah. No, man. I Thank you guys so much for bringing that up because I believe in that so much, you know, and you know, we're here in our studio right here, you know, and, and, and I'm, I live here in San Bernardino, you know, and a lot of people have even asked me, like, why are you still living in San Bernardino, you know, and, you know, we moved, we, we, we moved into this house in 2016, I believe, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and I don't know, you know, sometimes I even ask myself, why am I still here, you know, and, and I know that I'm not trying to encourage everyone that, but I just, I have this, this belief, this, this, my heart, my passion is that, you know what, like, the more we keep in this city, mm-hmm. you know, and, and and that's why I always try to encourage young people that, you know, are within my age or younger. I'm like, you know, wherever you're at, like, man, buy a home, you know, don't look at the area that you're going to be in. Exactly. Yeah. Because the more look positivity, yeah, the more positivity we ram into this city, like, why not? Like, okay, like we we complain about the situation of our city. Well, well, let's 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 us let's let the, you know the up and coming generation. Let's let's educate ourselves on you know how can we buy our first home and let's get into our first home and let's move young families into these neighborhoods because that's what's going to the the more we invest into our city, the more we keep things in here into our city. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm a big believer too. You know, when I, I've always one of the things that we always talk with my wife is like, man, when there's a a small business or or something new that's just opening, and you know, uh, even new barbers, I even do that with barbers. You know, when I know 
I have friends that, you know, they just open up a shop or something. I, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go support. Mm-hmm. I'm going to. Why? Because it's here within my city, you know, True. and it, it's 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 about keeping the economy flowing. It's about supporting one another. It, you know, it doesn't don't complain about the prize. You know, I always tell people, man, like, you know, if your friend or somebody local opens up their business, like, don't complain about the prices. Like, go, show love, show support. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. that's what's going to keep, you know, because you never know who those owners are. They they have family and then their their kids might be in the sports, you know, uh, um, programs, you know, that, that money, they might, it might be used to help support their family. You know, you mm-hmm. never know. So we have to keep that openness, that mindset that, you know, we have to, we're not competing with one another you know we're here to support to build one another Mm -hmm. and and to watch our community flourish because i agree like there's there's no reason why we have to go to orange county or to la or to all these like they have great things like i'm not saying that you know we we have to go but balance it yeah plus if you if you, if you talk about saving like if they find something more expensive here if you calculate your time driving out of the city in the traffic and how much you're gonna spend on gas as well exactly it's gonna be not worth it for you yeah at the end of the day yeah yeah, yeah it's about supporting here mm-hmm. i think it's also about this the, the the opportunity and the experience to get to know more people from your own community mm, yeah. yeah that's a that's really that's a really good point because i think a lot of times people um and there's nothing wrong with wanting to make money. There's nothing wrong with that. We all need money to survive. We all need money to make ends meet. But I think um, that's really key is is I think that there's a, uh, it's a beautiful thing. I, I We talk about this sometimes with my wife because um, there's times where, you know, we do, we have clients and we have stuff in it. You know, and sometimes it's like, you know, are we going to, are we going to raise our prices? Are we going to, mm-hmm. you know, we'll have conversations. And I say, you know what? No, no, we're going to keep it the same. Why? You know, for future clients, yes. But for these, you know, we're going to keep it the same. You know, even renters, you know, we have a we have an ADU that we rent out, you know, and we keep it the same, you know, because it's still profitable. Mm -hmm. But we're like, you know what? They believed in us in the beginning. Yeah. You know, they believed in our concept. They believed in us. So why would we punish them in that sense? You know, and of course, it's it's needed. But I said, you know what? Like we have to value the trust in the relationship more Mm -hmm. than anything else, you know, because they, they believed in us in the beginning when no one else was willing to say, Hey, I'll Mm -hmm. give you a shot. They were willing to give us a shot, you know? So I, I really thank you for, for pointing that out. Cause I think more young people, more young entrepreneurs need to hear that, that it's not always about, you know, the appearance or how they look or this or that, or, or you know how much you know they want to flash. It's some. It's valuing the relationships. Yeah. yeah. Thank God, I I can say that in Patronas I have the opportunity to have all the people that I vision that I will have. When I say that, oh, I know San Bernardino is full of beautiful people. These are my customers. Yeah. I yeah. think there is a say that eres lo que decretas. You are what you decree. Yeah. And I think it's very very true um since i opened i had this type of families i don't i don't have uh big problems in san bernardino it's a nice opportunity and this is why i end up opening a second branch yeah because it was a very beautiful experience it was fun it was yeah. it was organic as we said everything yeah. happens by the bless of god since they won yeah. i i opened in the in the birthday of my daughter the 9th of january mm-hmm. Okay. So when I open, there was a lot of cookers that believes on my on my on my vision, and one of them is my my um, top chef. She's an old lady. She's been working for many restaurants, and she knows me in one that I was the manager. So she told me, "You know what? I know how much you love food. I think you, this is gonna this is gonna be a, this is gonna be good." Yeah. I'm going with you. And she stayed with me, and the day we opened, she said, don't worry. Don't worry if it's just one pe- person. If, if it's only one client, don't get discouraged. This is going to be good. And no, it didn't happen like that. We opened the door. It was like six people waiting outside. Nice. And I think it was, it, it's just 
you are what you decret. Yeah. Eres lo que decretas. Sí, sí. So I saw yeah. that vision. I say it. I decret it's going to happen in my life. I'm yeah. going to bring this type of people and I'm going to be doing what I love. And this is what happened. So yeah. it's all about also good vibes. It's about believing yourself and bring that vision to your employees mm. so they cook with passion. They they do the same things. They yeah. do. They, your employees are your... Um, they they're your mirror like they show what they, you they are they reflect who you they are they reflect yeah. who you are so if you bring people that you make them feel your same passion you make them feel part of the family and everything this is this is what's going to happen yeah. you're going to have these results like good food good ambience atmosphere yeah. good and service good yeah. service and everything yeah that's this a, i think this is the main thing yeah that's really good how do yeah. you feel about how so far how the restaurants and everything in that industry um especially you saying like man like i didn't really see it but <laughs> once you saw her light up like and yeah. how do you feel now seeing everything operate um well restaurant is a very fun industry it's really fun um it's full of life you know everyone likes to eat and that's Simple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and especially when you do a good food, when you uh, meet everyday new people, uh, you start building a relation with your clients. They feel like home when they come. Yeah. It's really fun. Um, I never get bored when I go to the restaurant. Like, I feel I want to go, you know? Yeah. It's really, it's really nice. And my second location that we got, um, it was a surprise from me to my wife. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. My barber... Uh, is in Rialto. Okay. In the same plaza that I we got the second location. Okay. So there was a sushi place there. And for a reason, they closed down. Um, and I keep asking, hey, I want the number of the... Because there, like, there were no advertising for the place. Mm -hmm. So I really struggled to get the number of the owner. It took me like a month or two without me telling her. Okay. <laughs> so I work on the project like Silent. Nice. Same as I did. I <laughs> make take, take take notes, guys. Take notes. <laughs> I, I said to myself, she surprised me in the first one. I'm gonna surprise her in the second one. <laughs> so after I closed the deal with the owner and everything, I thought, hey, I'm gonna show you something. <laughs> she never expected. Said, I wanna do a haircut. I'm gonna show you something. So I went to get a haircut and uh, hey, here's the key of your other location. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's that's awesome. Had you had, what what went through your mind when you when he surprised you with that? You know what? And I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> I I was proud that because we work a lot in in um in saving. When we barely start our mm, our two businesses, because we're talking about four years in a row to open four businesses, so we work a lot. A lot of people start like um, like spending like crazy, like showing off yeah. and and stuff. And we just work. And first goal it was to get our house after our babies, because when we get our babies, they say we say that's it. There's no more game. The yeah. game's over. We need to to to, to work hard and when I saw that he believed in my passion that match that we're gonna spend our savings in opening a second location I was like this is an honor yeah it was an honor for for my for me that my family believes on me that match mm -hmm. I that saw it can it's a good put our savings on on mm -hmm. uh, um on on that hand. place yeah, yeah. I saw it it's a good investment after I see her passion in in this uh, in this in this uh, place. Can we stop? No, no, go ahead. <laughs> so, um, uh, so yeah, uh, I I really I really um, found it's a good investment after I saw how we we operate on her passion and in taking care of everything and and getting everything out so beautiful the taste of the food, how the clients are happy. It's amazing when you pass next to a client and say, oh my God, this menudo tastes like my grandma's. Yeah. And yeah, I got a lot of nice, beautiful comment that I, it makes me, yeah, I should support my wife in, in this, yeah. in this way and let's go wider. So this is why um, I look to another location without even me mentioning to her. However, she, she has this 
thing in her mind that she want to open another location. Yeah. But maybe she wasn't ready for that surprise for me to surprise her in, in yeah. this moment. That's that's awesome, man. Yeah. And, and I think it, it really speaks into, I think, a, a lot of a lot of couples that are in business together. I think that's sometimes that's one of the hard things is. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> is knowing, you know, knowing. Knowing the balance, but then also knowing when and how to support one another. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I know for for myself or my wife, you know, we we recently like I want to say the last two years, we've really been working closer, a lot closer together. And so we've been able to see the difference, you know, from, you know, just her being having a little side thing and, you know, me working full time, you know, um, it's two years, two years ago, we decided to like go all in, you know, we're like, okay, we're going to go all in. And, and for a long time, though, it was really hard, you know, it was really hard to, to say, okay, like, how do I, how, how do I support her dreams? How do I support her passion? How do I support her ideas? Mm-hmm. You know, because I think, um, what I'm kind of hearing from you guys though, is that Eddie, you, you, you saw how she was working that passion though. Mm-hmm. You saw how she was, you know, invested in it, you know, her time, mm-hmm. her passion, her energy and everything. Yeah. And, um, so I think it's like, when you see that, it's kind of hard not to, Say I'm gonna support this, exactly. right? Yeah, that's yeah. what happened. Yeah, and the way, and did you want to chime in a little bit more on that, Iris? Well, mm, the only thing that it motivates me to well, there was a couple things that motivates me to come to this podcast, but one of the things it was, I saw it was an opportunity to to let people know that um, if you have a passion, no matter how hard it's to get there, work on it. Um, I'm very happy to, um, sometimes I go back home like at 1 a.m. It's been, it's been hard because we're building right now. We are in that, we are in, there is steps and we're in the step that we're building clientele, we're building team, we're building everything. It's, it's our first year and we're getting very known. It's fast. Yeah. So this is an opportunity, and I see it like that. So I have to be there. I'm the yeah. face. Um. Also, I'm the 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 one that did most of the creations and everything. So I want to. I, I need to make sure my team reflects my vision. Yeah. And sometimes I get back home like twelve one a.m. Yeah. But I don't feel tired. I feel sad because I was. Uh, uh, my my kids were with my mother in law all mm-hmm. day. But I think they're gonna be so proud of his mo- of her mom yeah. when they grow up. Yeah. So, plus because Patronas is all about them, the name, everything. It's for them in honor f- uh, to them. So, um, this is this is one thing that it makes me feel like I wanna I wanna introduce women to feel like. They can do it. That they can empower themselves and believe on themselves and yeah. and do something for for feel like not not a like sometimes you have a passion but you don't you don't take it out yeah and yeah. you don't work on that you're just stuck on your house or you're just stuck yeah. in your family um, taking care of your kids there's always the, there's always a balance that you can work with and make yeah. it happen. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's really good. I'm glad that you brought that up because, um, it, it really does speak into, cause I'm, I'm all for, um, I'm all for women business owners. I'm all for, you know, being that support, you know, and being able to see, you know, women thrive in the business place, you know, and I think that how do you handle, how do you handle, and you kind of talked about it a little bit, but how do you handle that where, you know, that pressure of, you know, where sometimes um, you feel the need that man, like my kids. It was difficult at the beginning, but that I think the last two months I start bringing my kids a little bit, yeah. and they and they already know patronas. They're like when they saw Instagram, they're like, "That's my mom. That's that's patronas." Yeah. And now um, Najat is the oldest one. She start cooking with me. Aww. She likes to go, and uh, for sure I make sure she's safe. That we're doing something normal, of course, of course, normal yeah. and everything. But I like to introduce her. Yesterday she washed dishes with me. Yeah. And 
I just want her to be part of it. I just want her to yeah. understand that this is for them. And um, there is nothing more bad than build something as parents and then give it to, to your kids and they don't have the same uh, mm -hmm. type of ethics and everything to, to work. Or and they didn't, they, yeah. They or, just destroy it. Or they didn't know the, the hard work behind the it. The hard work yeah. behind and they just like spend the money or destroy what you did and all your... Um, they need to know the value. They yeah. need to know the value. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they, they start going every day. The little one is one year one year um, old, so she's not... She's not um, understanding, but the right. one three years old, yeah. she enjoy patronas, and she she always asks us, um, "How how's the restaurant? How's the old one? And how's the new?" Aww. She understand that, yeah. and when when she goes to check the the old one, the the she call it like that, mm -hmm. then she say, "Are we going to the new?" Aww. And then we're going, and she spend time, and she really appreciate and everything. So. I, I try to keep that balance, but uh, same as well, they're babies. So yeah. they have to be safe. They have to be at home. And thank right. God I have the, the opportunity that I have my mother-in-law. And right. she's taking care of them 24-7. Awesome. Yeah. Maybe I won't be able to do all these things happen if I won't have the family support. Yeah. So I think everything is... It's, 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 it's how yeah. God bring it to us. Yeah, and but it's, you can do it as well. If you don't have a mother-in-law that wants to take care of your kids, yeah, there's yeah. daycares. There's a lot of things. There's a nice daycares. Yeah. Uh, but you as, you as a woman, you have to pursue what you want. Yeah. And believe and, on yourself. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I was going to say. I'm, I'm so glad that you brought that point up. And even the, the, the examples that you gave of how you work it, how mm -hmm. you guys work it with your kids. Because we were just talking about that uh, with my wife the other day is that, mm -hmm. you know what, because um, you hear it over and over again is how do you balance? The truth is in entrepreneurship, business owners, it's there is no balance. No, you know, th it's there crazy. really is. Chaotic. There's yeah. no balance. <laughs> we, 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 no. Well, we work like every day, maybe uh, I can say 16 hours, 17 yeah. hours every day. Yeah. Yeah. But the most precious thing when you get home and your daughter run to you and say, I love you, daddy, yeah. you're my hero. That's yeah. the best thing. You're yeah. my hero. Text. That was a good one. You feel he cried when he heard that from, oh, from the yeah. three year old. It was when he, she was two. Yeah. And we opened Patronas. And she said, You're my hero. Oh, man. That's, that's, yeah, those are the most beautiful mm -hmm. things. And, and that's what I love so much about this, uh, our, our new generation of business owners parenting is we're making them a part. You know, mm -hmm. it's not that we're trying to divide our kids mm -hmm. over here and we're trying to divide this over here. You know, our marriage is over here, our kids mm -hmm. are over here, our business is over here. It's like, no, we're we're all intertwined, you know? Mm -hmm. And cuz I was I was talking about that the other day. It was like, you know what? I remember as a kid like as a kid, you you really didn't care where you went with your parents. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's like, you know, you really didn't cry because you didn't go to Disneyland. You know, you cried because you wanted to spend time with your parents. You know, it wasn't so much that you wanted to. There wasn't a specific place that you wanted to go to. You just remember wanting to spend time with them. You know, and I think that um, that mm -hmm. pressure sometimes of, you know, maybe our upbringing, you know, a lot of people come um you know, they're raised different, you know, they're, you know, their, their mom was a stay at home mom, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they have that pressure of like, well, is that what I have to do? You know, or, and a lot of times, sadly, there's parents that, yeah. that don't support, you know, they're like, you know, Hey, you know, you're, you're spending too much time at your business and you're not paying attention to the kids. And, yeah. and there's a lot of people do get that pressure. And, and a lot of times people don't have it and they have great support systems, but Regardless, I think it's this new generation of our new uh, our generation right now of business owners of parenting. It's we're not excluding them; we're involving yeah. them. You know, and that's a beautiful thing. You have to yeah. multitask these days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. You got like, hey, be papa <laughs> one moment. Yeah. You know, be business owner. And there's but, nothing bad to be a, a, a mommy at home all day. There's also a lot of beautiful things that I'm I'm losing from my babies. Yeah. But in my case, uh, I have not the chance, for future. the chance to, mm -hmm. to, to think twice. I was like, what do I want to stay with them and 
or be with them a little bit, but also build something for them that they're going to be like, wow, mom, yeah. you yeah. made it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's this is what is moving me every day. Like, yeah. uh, I, I believe on myself. I believe that one day I'm going to have multiple locations and they, they're going to be like, yeah. and you did all this for me? Yeah. And yeah. this is my motivation every day. And the 100%. good thing to have your babies ready since they're young, just, of course, they're not going to work at this age, but just have them mentally ready that when they grow up, they're going to handle responsibility. Yeah. Like now, um, my daughter, she's so attached to my mom, the older one. Uh -huh. And um, one day I was taking her with me and my mom said, oh, you're going to leave me by myself all day? They say, Grandma, I'm gonna I have to go work. I have to go to the <laughs> office and I have to go to the restaurant and the other one I have to check my business. Yeah. So <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's she's cool. three. She's yeah. three and a half and she's saying that. Yeah. Um, which I'm really glad. So we're yeah. trying to do, you know, just put like just kind of prepare them mentally to it, to be ready when they yeah. grow up. It is a beautiful thing. It is. Mm -hmm. We we've been able to experience that with our eight year old, our son, the yeah. tallest mm -hmm. one that you guys mm -hmm. met. Um he he cries when he's not able to go with it because we have a, a mobile coffee cart business mm -hmm. that we just started in May. Oh, nice. And um, so we do a full service coffee um, wow. for w private events, anything. We're you coffee know. lovers. Oh, nice. okay. Yeah. I'm excited. Oh, yeah. So we do, yeah, we have a, we're actually going to go do, um, I, uh, I think it's like a high school football game today. We're going to go later. And, but there's times where we have to go and we can't take him. And he cries because he wants to go with us because he mm -hmm. really likes to go and see that. And and he's a good salesman. You know, he's yeah. like he's nice, a good salesman. Nice. He's, um, <laughs> you know, but but like you said, that's that's it's it's beautiful to see that it's beautiful yeah. for them to see that they're catching that mentality of mm -hmm. like, like, oh, no, do, do I have to go do this? It's more like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, let's go do it. Like, mm -hmm. I want to go with mom. I want to go with dad. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to. And that's such a it's 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 such a. A they're, new new thing that we're seeing in today's building generation. building a new generation. We are. We really yeah. are, you know. And and I, I have a question that I, I'm pretty sure a lot of audience will probably either relate to or even want to know is, so as a married couple, you know, we kind of talked about family life. You know, we, we kind of agree that there's, you got to multitask. There's really no such thing as balance, you right? You to be octopus, they yeah, say, in my yeah. office. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Not pulpa, huh? Like right there. Uh -huh. and, uh, but how, if you guys do, how do you guys, as a married, as a married couple, as business partners, as parents, how do you guys handle disagreements? Wow, <laughs> that's a good one. I think that's a big thing. <laughs> wow, I think you can answer that one. No, I think you can answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> Disagreements, okay. The thing is that me and my husband, we are in a really difficult spot because we are partners 100% in yeah. four businesses. And then we're partners parenting. Mm -hmm. And then we're partners uh, as, as, as couple. Yeah. So we always have to find the balance. What is the problem? Mm -hmm. So we don't bring it to the business or we don't bring it to parenting or we don't bring it to the couple. So we're together like 24-7. We, we run all the businesses together. So me and her are together like all the day. Yeah. And this is, I think this is one of the, of the, of the reasons why we're a little bit strong because, um, we support each other and we try to, um, to build everything together and yeah. we, we try to balance it. But the thing is, yes, we do have a lot of problems every day. Right more with the new business when it's a new business it's, it's chaotic i say it it's it's it, it gets a it's a beautiful mess <laughs> it's a beautiful mess there is days that they're like 100 percent good and there's days that we're just tired and we're tired of uh, a lot of problems and everything but my husband teach me that iris wife needs to be iris wife and iris mom needs to be iris mom mm. and iris business owner needs to be business owner mm -hmm. so when we have a problem with the relationship sometimes we we take a time to say let's let's talk about it later on today and we come with the same good vibes and the same motivation and everything to make it happen on the business yeah when we have a, a difference as parents 
that's the one that I think it was more easy for us because we have the same type of roots in different ethnicity once again but yeah. the same type of family family values values yeah. and everything so with that i think we don't we don't disagree a lot yeah we are we both wants the best for the kids mm. so yeah. i'm gonna put you an example when when we decide to bring my mother-in-law i asked her i was the one asking her please please uh i hamati it's it's a suegra and and in arabic please come and help us because we're building another business and I really need you to, to come and help us, uh, help me with the babies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people comes and say like, oh my God, you don't have privacy. You live with your, with your in-laws. Yeah. And I'm like, they don't need to live with me. They have their own big house and they're, and they're in, in exactly. overseas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're coming to support his kid big difference and mm -hmm. m and me that i'm attached to the, yeah. this family now yeah. so they're supporting us because they they were in the same type of uh goals when they were younger yeah. so this is why they move with yeah. us so now I, I don't have a small family i have his parents that are my parents now yeah and that they're teaching the good values to my kids yeah. and i have that open window to to build yeah so it was a good bless it was a big bless and um with that part we don't have a lot of difficulty with the part of relationship every day you have to work on it because if you work with your with your um with your couple Yes, there's going to be tough time right. because you're 100% with that person yeah. and you need to know how to not mix and to know B that business personal uh, and know that your husband yeah. is is the head of the house. Mm, yeah. That you have to give that respect that he deserves and and also bring that respect to your kids for his father and yeah. but in real in, in business mind you are partner so when we get home, Eddie is 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 the leader of the house. Yeah. And and I have to be the wife. I have yeah. to be I also have my voice, also have my values and everything, but not mix what happened on the on the on the business. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. that. Thank you for being so honest and open about that because I think in in today's culture, a lot of times you know, um, people don't acknowledge that you know that. Hey, you know what? I, I I can be this this boss lady. I can be this, you know, um, this business owner and everything. But you know, to have those values ingrained in me, to still be humble enough to say, hey, he's mm -hmm. he's my husband, though. You yes. know, and he's the head of household. And you know, and there's nothing. I think a lot of times, you know, with um, you know, the modern, the more modern feminist movements and things like that, like. They feel like the need to have to be everything, you mm -hmm. know, and even overpower even their husband sometimes. And and that's one of the things that um, I'm so glad that you 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 were so open and vulnerable to say that. And I think that that is what attributes, you know, to be able to because I think that in, in either case and I um, and if you want to chime in on this, too, right now, Eddie, is even as husbands, sometimes we have to humble ourselves, too. Right. Exactly. Um, I can say the the main key for success between partners is respect and communication. If you have those two, you don't have any problems. Yeah. Um, I don't take any decisions by myself, not not at work, not at home. I have to discuss with my wife and mm. she's the same thing. That's how we always agree yeah. to solve stuff. That's the right way. Yeah. Um, but the, I think the only bad thing of having multiple businesses, sometime you go home and your mind's still working. I have right. to tell her, it is calm down. Let's disconnect right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you have a lot of problems. Or we That's have a you, date and we're talking about business. And exactly. <laughs> we end up knowing like what we're doing. We have a date. Why? Yeah. Especially four and a half years, we didn't have any vacation until now. Be believe it or not. Wow. Imagine four and a half yeah. years. This is this is one of the bad thing to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> this is one of the, the worst thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's that's awesome, yeah. and I love that respect and communication. And I, because I know for myself, um, like I said, these last couple years that we're we've been all in with my wife, it's really forced us to communicate more. You know, it's mm -hmm. almost like it's almost like being you know because we have our kids here, we have um, 
you know, our two boys are homeschooled. Uh, we homeschool them. And then uh, we have new businesses and then some existing things that we do. And so we're together, like literally yeah. 24-7. And so, but one of the the positive things that I can honestly say is that it's really forced us to communicate more. And I believe, I wanted to add, I think one of our success stuff is um, we don't split expenses. We never split um, money-wise or something. Your account, my account, my money, your money. We don't mm. have this at all. We don't have your bills, my bills. We are really union, me and her. I mean, yeah. everything. That's uh, just awesome. like one hand, yeah. That's, if we that's, fail, we fail. If we grow, we grow. Mm. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. I've, I'm a big believer in that, too. Like, mm -hmm. I think ever since we... <clears throat> we were dating actually like we've had a joint account you know like you know and then when we got married we just and we've always just functioned that way you know we have access to our business accounts personal accounts like we're in it together you know because that's yeah. I mean, for everyone is different you know if everyone exactly. everyone works out their way yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. but when when asked like hey what do you think like my opinion is always going to be you know what if you can trust each other with money yeah, you can trust each other with in anything, anything and exactly. anything, you know, mm -hmm. I think because money is, you know, it's great and everything, but it can also, you know, tear Destroy. a lot of people when well, yeah. you have to take precaution about one of the the factors in this. That means there's something wrong. Yeah. In the relation. Yeah. A hundred percent. And so um, and last question, because I know that. I know we're 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 already an hour and a half. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> oh see, it's God. it's a, see see a great. It's a it's, it's been a great conversation, mm -hmm. and um, this is a good one. I, this what we can kind of close with this one, and you guys can both chime in. And can you share any memorable or inspiring moments you've experienced? You know, as business owners, something that really stands out, or a lesson, or even a even if it was a bad moment, but it helped you guys learn from it. Um, and maybe something that you guys would like to share that can really, um, maybe somebody out there that's listening can relate to it. I think you should uh, share when they say that you can't make it in logistics. The oh, person yeah. that tell you for reals, you're not gonna make it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what to call these people, if we're going to call them haters or uh, people that try to um, discourage you. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I, don't, I don't pay attention to those and I don't listen to those at all. Uh, when I first started, um, hey, do you know how much you're going to spend until you're going to start getting paid? You know, all the problems, you know, all the suits that you're going to get, you know. There are a lot of negative people that yeah. you don't have to pay attention to it. Just make everything according to the books. Um, work legally. Don't go under the table for stuff. Mm. And you should be fine. Yeah. Um, and I want to give advice. Don't start your career with buying a house. A house cannot get you a business. A house cannot produce money for you. Start your career with buying a business. Get a business for yourself. And the business can get you a house. That's... My experience that's how i did yeah. after two years working we got our own house and we're happy right now nice and if you want to grow do not waste your money try to save it so you can open another business with your um, income that you're making mm. or grow the same one that's way to grow well mm -hmm. going to your question there was one day that it changed my whole vision on on Patronas in specific um, is when I say, wow, this thing's happening. Um, there was one, um, I don't know if I can call it foodie or, or I think it's just a person that has Instagram and a lot of people follows him. Oh, and an uh, influencer. An influencer. The, the, yeah. And he went to the restaurant and he made a, a, a reel about us. I saw it and then I started getting a little bit nervous because it was getting a lot, a lot, a lot of likes and and views. Yeah. And I say like, nothing happened the first day. It was Sunday. Few people comes with that reel. Not until Wednesday or Thursday, I was going by myself with two people in the in the kitchen back that time. 
and one on 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 the back uh, <coughs> part of the of the kitchen um, doing this washing myself and one server that was a big thing for ourselves yeah. back the time and then i start so i, I start seeing a lot of cars parking on the on the restaurant <laughs> Not one, two, five. It was a lot. Yeah. I had lines outside. Wow. And I was, I, I get into the kitchen. I start cooking, yeah. trying to get as much as I can and letting people know that we were already with two hours of waiting time. And the people wait. Wow. It was a moment that we wasn't ready to. We, like, we didn't know it was going to happen. Yeah. And especially because you never think that this is going to happen in a little spot on San Bernardino with, uh, with 17 tables. And, and you, you think you can have a full restaurant with few to go and, mm. and be happy and successful, but you don't believe that this is going to happen. And this is when I, yeah. I touched myself and I was like, this is happening. <laughs> yeah. My dream and more than what I dream. And, yeah. And this, this, this is when I say, okay, you have to take it serious. These people is taking you serious. Then you have a, another responsibility. Yeah. Not only your family believes on you, your husband believes on you, and invest your mo the money that you guys save on the on the on the on the past years. Yeah. These people is believing on yeah. you, and they're waiting outside for. See what is on your hands. What was the difference? Why people saying that you're different? Yeah. And um, why you're off the beat? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So that was my, that was the thing that that I changed completely. I I got, I got um, a big team, and I started believing on myself. I was like, this, if this happened today, it has to keep happening. Yeah. And then I hear a lot of compliments. Oh my God, how how you do it? It's always full on the weekends. I can see that people parking everywhere yeah. and, and this and that. And I'm like, because I believe on on yeah. on my product. I believe on myself, and I continue. Yeah. Besides to get scared and 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 don't learn. Yes, I cry that day because I give a bad service a little bit that day. But next day I had another opportunity mm -hmm. to receive more people and give them good service and receive more people. And until I feel that I learn. And that now I can say that I can handle the re restaurant industry in the size of my of my restaurant. Yeah, that's awesome. And then I think it even I'm sure it even uh, opened your eyes to the power of social media. Yes. Oh right? my God! Social media can do everything. Yeah. Talk. Maybe we can even close with that a little bit. Talk about because I I see your social media. You guys really have a really good. I love how you guys handle your social media. Talk about that because I think a lot of business owners are either scared, intimidated, or they just don't believe in it. They don't care about it. What would you encourage? What would you guys encourage them? Because obviously, the power yeah. of one reel. Look at what the power of yeah. one reel did. We are the new generation. We have to. We have to understand that you can do everything through social media. Yeah. You can do movements. You can do. Uh, help people support uh causes do a lot of stuff through social media so when i barely opened my my restaurant there was a lot of uh, platforms that they offer me and i was 100 percent secure that i don't need to invest a lot of money that i have to believe on myself and yeah. get out and yeah. and put the product there and and try to Maybe yes, invest a little bit because right. Instagram is a, a it's a it's a it's a platform that you maybe you have to to invest a little bit yeah. to to make your reels beautiful to get right. a little uh, a photographer or something. Right. But not to to go out of the budget. Right. Just to just to try to make something nice. Most of my reels are made by myself. Yeah. That's I have awesome. photographers as well, mm -hmm. but yeah. they're local kids that. Uh, I like to to keep changing them, so I give them an opportunity yeah. to to teach me. They're 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 younger than me. They have these new trends and yeah, these new that, things, TikTok, yeah, this that. and that, and I'm absorbing from them. Yeah, and I'm giving them the opportunity to have a platform to do what they like as well. That's awesome. So, yeah, yeah you can do everything in social media. I think every business can run on social media. 
Um, yeah. It's just a matter to to know that there's a lot of bad lash and good lash, and just get the positive part. Right. Yeah. There was a, the f the first reel I did speaking in English. They said a lot of things on TikTok. They say like, you should not even speak English. You should this and and one. It was the only that one that marks me. It was like this is why people that comes from other country and learns English doesn't believe in themselves and they start like getting more fluent or or speaking yeah and because of people like you yeah. that was the only one that it was important for me because i know i move the feelings of someone yeah. that is like me that learns uh late and that maybe has accent or yeah. something but so what you have a lot to say yeah you you still you still have um the ability to build and a lot of stuff it doesn't matter. There's yeah. going to be one person that is going to be benefit of the person that you are, the what you can teach them, the what you can um, uh, show for them to, to become better. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And did you want to chime in? This is the future, I believe. This is the future. Social media is, is, yeah. the, is the thing right now. When you first open, we... we uh, we advertise in many ways, like in radio and many many uh, platforms. Uh, and we used to communicate with every client when they come, like, hey, how do you know about us? Mm -hmm. I think maybe one or two you just told me we hear you by the radio. Yeah. All the rest were Instagram, it's YouTube, <laughs> yeah. uh, Yelp, yeah. <laughs> all this stuff, which is my wife is good at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think, yeah, social media is, is the key for success in, 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 in business right now to, to let uh, people know about you. Yeah. No, that's one of the things that we, we, we encourage so many people and clients is that, you know, because we work with um, we work with certain companies too that you know we help them with their social media too and things like that and we don't we tell them we're like we're not here to promise you or to sell you a dream that hey if you do this like you're gonna get millions of dollars it's like no it's like what you need to understand and what I always tell business owners is that it's you you have you have more control and you have an opportunity to showcase who you are and what you have, mm -hmm. you know, don't miss out. You know, I, I, that's one of the things I always tell them is don't miss out because the only difference between you and maybe another restaurant that is on social media is, is exactly that they're on social media and you're not, you know, just show yourself, display what you are, you know, cause this new generation is like they're that's what they're looking for they're just looking mm -hmm. for authenticism you know they're don't looking don't copy be yourself yeah, be yourself you know like and that's what people love people just want like man i want to i want to go try that you know they didn't you know sell me with a commercial they just they sold me with their authenticity you know yeah. mm -hmm. so so yeah everyone can do enchiladas but if your enchiladas are authentic they're going to go and try your enchiladas. Exactly. Exactly. No, well, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much, man, for, 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 I think there's so much, so much nuggets, so much value that, that we were able to talk about, especially for couples that are doing business together. And, mm -hmm. and even, I mean, there's so much that you guys spoke about and I heard that, I, I'm sorry. And I hope that so many people can, can resonate with and i know that they are you know i know even for me just sitting here with you guys mm -hmm. i'm absorbing so much you know because like i said you know me and my wife we're on this journey we're on this path also and and it's been it's we've had good moments we've had bad moments we've had ugly moments you know and it's it's um it's one of the but at the same time it's it's such a beautiful journey you know mm -hmm. and hearing you guys' story it just encourages us. It, it encourages me, you know, that, okay, we're doing something right. You know, we're mm -hmm. doing something right. Because I feel a lot of people have the pressure that um, they have to be a certain way or look a certain way or yeah. things have to happen a certain way. And that's far from the truth because mm -hmm. everyone's journey is so different. You know, it's like you guys didn't start with a passion. You guys started with just seeing an opportunity to do something, mm -hmm. but then eventually by building, by saving, you know, being wise with your decisions, it eventually led you guys to uh, birth your passion, you know, yeah. which is Las Patronas, mm -hmm. which I still, I'm, I am I'll admit, I haven't gone and I need to go. And I keep seeing, I keep seeing the reels. And I told my wife the other day, I was like, man, we need to go try this because it looks <laughs> yeah. so delicious. 
And so, you have to try without letting me know. So yeah, yeah. So no, then yeah. you let me know what what what's yeah. your opinion. Yeah, and I I'm love a, to get feedbacks. Yeah. No, and I'll give you a hundred. I'm a foodie. <laughs> I'm a big foodie guy. Like I love, I love food. I we really do, and uh, I love. I love sushi. I see what you got. I'm like, man, that looks so good. I need to what go. What is your favorite? Yeah. It's favorite what? Sushi or food? Food. So, man. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> it, it, you know what? I, I love sushi. Mm-hmm. I love sushi. Sinaloa style sushi, it's... It's an experience. Yeah, it really it really is. It's 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 so it's good tasty. with the fusion, the, the fusion, fusion of it. Is- yeah, it's a hundred percent. Like it's a, a, I love that. And but I also, I think I'm gonna go with Thai food. I think that after that, I think Thai food because Mexican food, of course, but Thai food, I love Thai food. The if flavors, you the pad Thai, <laughs> the, pa, the pad Thai is just something else, man. And yeah. then there's this other. I don't know if you guys have tried it, the um, the the cashew nut chicken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. The cashew nut chicken. I love that. So, but yeah, I want to say probably, yeah, sushi, Mexican food, and then probably Thai food. That's, my, that's probably my top. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to close saying that thank you for the opportunity to come. Of course. And the reason I see a big platform here, it was just because I saw that you have a lot of followers and potential in San Bernardino. And I want to invite everyone to to build the city again, yeah. to believe in San Bernardino opportunities, to yeah. to support business with other business. And I'm open to 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 talk with a lot of business owners yeah. and try to 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 do something that makes the city an economy better in this in this city yeah no yeah a hundred i it's i always say it san bernardino is a sleeping giant it really is you know and and it will be a giant awake and it really will once that giant wakes up oh my goodness like la look out orange county look out well orange county will always have us they'll always have have more again more more um more advantage because they got the beaches. <laughs> and yeah. who doesn't love the beach? I mean, that's one of the things that uh, Orange County, but they have the best beaches. So. We have, we we have the economy. We, we, have, we the have the warehouses. Up in, we have a lot uh, of Big stuff. Bear. Yeah, Big yeah. Bear. Big Bear. Arrowhead. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That That's one of the things that I think uh, San Bernardino takes for granted. Mm-hmm. The, our mountains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Big beautiful. Bear Lake, Air Lake Arrowhead, like we have they some don't have beautiful it scenery. <laughs> yeah, they. Right? Yeah, we. It's beautiful. We've gone a few times this year. We've gone a lot more. We went a lot more, and it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful, and it's just right here. Mm-hmm. And Jorge, most important, we have the people. And we have great people. Yeah. We great really people. do. We really do. So, thank you guys so much for for coming. Um, thank you guys. I know that you guys can't see me. Um, but this was Offbeat Podcast. And don't forget to share this with someone. Share it. Um, if you are a business entrepreneur, if you know someone that is, um, that if you know a marriage, if you know a couple that are starting a business, that are operating in business, maybe they're going through some hard times, maybe they're struggling, um, send this to them. You know, I think that's the uh, the power of social media. Come Going back to that is... We have so much access to knowledge and to information. And the beautiful thing is we have people here in the Inland Empire, guys. We have people here that are doing some amazing, amazing things. So let's not sleep on it. Let's support our people. Let's support our city. And let's keep thriving. Let's keep doing great things. And don't forget, man, you know, God loves you guys. And with God, all things are possible. You know, thank you guys so much, Eddie, Edis. Thank you guys so thank much. Thank you. Visit thank you. their restaurant. Visit them. Um, tell them, oh, before that, tell them, how can they find you on social media? And then where are you located? We are two locations. Uh, one in San Bernardino, 150 West Highland Avenue between Highland and Sierra. And the other one is Rialto. It's uh, 535, 535 South Riverside Avenue, South Riverside Avenue in yeah. Rialto, California. There you go. They, you guys can find us in, so, in social media and Instagram as Las Patronas Restaurant, TikTok as well, and YouTube. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, staffing agency, mm-hmm. right? And where are you guys located and how can they find you guys? We're here in San Bernardino. Our office It's at 114 East Airport Drive, Suite okay. 103. Okay, there you go. So if you're looking for work, if you're, mm-hmm. you know, follow them. 
Um, I'm going to have all their Instagram pages, all their websites, their phone numbers. I'm going to have it on the details right there of uh, our YouTube page. So that way you guys can click on it. Give them a follow. Give this beautiful couple a follow. They're doing some amazing things. And again, if you are in need of just finding some delicious food, or visit job. Las Patronas. <laughs> or if you're in, in need of a job, go check out their agency. You guys are welcome. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. This was Offbeat Podcast. Let's go. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs>